So a little uh, quick weekly update uh, on the Sling TSI build. So this week uh, I riveted in the top rear fuselage skins after I bonded the canopy and riveted the canopy into place and I got the baggage door installed. Uh, previously I had painted, and you can't tell from this view at all, but last, uh, the end of last week, I had painted the canopy, uh, the inside of the canopy, and I thought it turned out really well. Um, I, uh, I left it open that I would take it to a paint shop. Um, I actually had a paint shop that somebody recommended that uh, the, a friend of a neighbor. So after doing it, I decided I liked it. It was good. It didn't need to be redone, so we're going to keep it. Um, I also painted the doors. Again, in this light with this camera, I don't think you can even tell, um, but they, they turned out good. The color is a little lighter than I think I would have liked. Um, when I got the paint chip sample, it looked darker uh, by a couple of shades than how it actually turned out, uh, but I think it'll be fine. Um, so the, the canopy went on pretty well. Um, the, uh, these are the chemicals that I used. Uh, and this is the stuff that Sling recommends. Uh, Evan and his videos on the canopy discuss these same things. So the, they're kind of expensive. I, I think these were high 20s per, this is a standard caulk gun tube size. It's uh, 300 milliliters, but it's a standard caulk gun size. It fits in a, a standard caulk gun. Then uh, the Sika Activator 205, this is like a prep. It's before you put either the 206 or the 209 down. Um, the 206, just reading, um, I have on the uh, on the the metal here. Try not to move too fast. On the inside of this is is primed where the the fiberglass meets this on the inside is primed aluminum and reading the specs on the 206, I felt like that was more appropriate. So I put a, uh, I painted and it is dark black. So make sure you have some old clothes on because if you get it on, you're probably not getting it off. It is deep, deep, deep black paint basically. Um, so you basically paint the primer on um, along your surfaces on the inside of here. Um, I use the 206 for that. Then on the edge of the canopy that's in here, I used the 209, which seemed more appropriate for the fiberglass. So again, uh, they're, they're dyed black, which is better for the window installation. It really doesn't matter for this, uh, but it is black, 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 indigo, black, iron ball, black. I don't know. It's just super dark. So wear some old clothes in case you splatter any on you. I bought all of this from a, a marine supply business. I guess uh, in doing some research, um, and you can even see there's a picture of a boat on here. I guess this product is used in the marine industry more than the aviation industry. That's their bigger market. Um, so I bought this from a place called Hodges Marine that I just found online that happened to have everything I needed all in stock at a decent price. So Hodges Marine, you can, it's available all over. Amazon didn't have all of what I needed at once, so I just wanted to buy it all from the same place uh, on the minute that I was doing the order. Um, mine, the, uh, the 206 and the 209 came with these little brushes. They're little 50 cent brushes, uh, but they're actually really good for applying this stuff. So uh, if yours doesn't come with these, which it probably won't unless you buy it from Hodges Marine, um, you can buy these little disposable brushes and it actually worked pretty well for uh, applying it. And uh, these are probably garbage now. They're uh, pretty, they're hard as a rock. Uh, but anyway, those are the chemicals. And then the, uh, obviously this is the Sika that, that's actually the adhesive sealant uh, that then you put in, uh, you know, in here. So mine still needs some cleanup. Um, Evan has a, uh, a good overview of how he recommends you sort of make this look a little prettier and I'll do that later. 
uh, using some quarter inch tape to help get a good gap and then filling some CK in here and, and smoothing it out with a squeegee uh, is his process. I think that's probably what I'm gonna do later. Um, I have a little bit of a bulge. I don't know, you can just barely see it here where the, um, the inside, the channel right here, it just wasn't bent quite perfectly and it gave me a little bulge. But I think when I do that little Sika Flex, it'll sort of take care of that. The rest of this is just cosmetic. I'm actually pretty happy with the bond and I'm real happy with the bond here. In fact, I don't know that I'll do anything here because it's very smooth. Um, again, on the camera, I'm not sure how it's coming out, but uh, I'm real happy with how the, the transition is here. Very smooth. Um, but, but all was not sunshine and rainbows. Um, I had a few issues up at the top and you can't see it, but right up here, I have a non-parachute model TSI with the cables installed. I mentioned that in my last video. And the cables come out of the canopy up here uh, at the very top. And they go into this um, uh, little box that holds the, uh, the cables. And those cables are a real problem to try to get bundled up and to nest smoothly and flat in that area. But also, and I don't know, I might can get in here. If you can see the white, that's, the, that's where the cables come out. And right where the cables come out, you can't, there's not enough space there to put a full rivet in. So I had to cut down four rivets to half size. Um, and these are the bigger four millimeters, the 153 rivets. Um, that start here and go up. Uh, I had to use, I had to cut them down because the cables didn't give them enough depth. So uh, anyway, um, pretty happy. I'm going to start the gear today. I have the, uh, I have the engine mount, and actually I have that assembly all ready to go over here. So uh, that's ready to go on. So you have the, uh, the cables, the cables attach in here. Um, so I'll attach the cables into the uh, engine mount. Uh, you know, the, it has a, uh, a little metal, a strap gadget that goes there uh, that ties the cables into the engine mount. And then I've got the wheel already mounted. So then I'm ready for the main gear. I'm gonna swing my table around uh, to give me access to the gear channel here. And then we're gonna try to fit that. So that'll be today and tomorrow. So anyway, I'll do an update uh, next week and it'll probably be my last update before I move to my new uh, new house and hangar. Uh, but I wanted to give a little update. Uh, this was kind of a big item off the list. So to everyone building, good luck, good progress. And to everyone else, have a good weekend.